So behind me is a 1980 Piper Saratoga that had a gear up landing right here a few months ago. We bought the airplane sight unseen, and today we're gonna get it fixed up. We're gonna fly it 500 miles back to Pennsylvania to the rescue hangar. The only catch is we only got three days to do it. To do that, I brought some help. This is the very first time the crew has seen the Saratoga. I bet they're super excited. Three days? No way. I think he hit his head one too many times. With as confident as this team is, there's no way we can fail. Think you're getting that project done in three days? What? No. No. Who said that? Jason. Jason's insane. I mean, totally bonkers. So if you guys haven't checked out Blair Craft on YouTube, check out his channel. Josh is literally building, you're building an airport, like, at your house. Yep. Half a mile runway. I'm yep. so jealous of you. Yep. I'm so jealous of you. So hopefully it's long enough so we can finish the 401 up and we can land it there. That would be awesome. But uh, really excited about that and excited to have you here. So Josh got a hold of me. He knew we had this job, so he stopped by. So it's going to be Josh, uh, me, and Greg, who is already in there working. And, of course, Joe. We already dialed out the crank. If you guys saw that episode, we dialed out this crank just to check and make sure, uh, per the AD, that it's within spec. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and we need to pull this back accessory case off the engine we have a new gear for it we have a new bolt we have an overhauled mag we have a new vacuum we're hoping that we can actually take this thing out of here and sneak that accessory case out that way what do you think the chances are that we can squeeze this thing out of there hmm. i'm gonna go with 57 percent. 57 percent, spoken like so, a true amp right so there i'm just uh you know I, a little bit on our side, but yeah, you, you good. Don't know. We don't know. I'll take seven percent on our side. Okay. This is definitely a tough, uh, tough thing. So we're gonna remove all this stuff in this corner here. Hopefully, we can get it back. We can slip it out because if we can't do that, getting this done in like three days is next impossible because this whole engine's gonna have to come off then. And I mean, this is a turbo normalized engine. Look at all of the wiring all over this. I mean, the exhaust, the intake, the the turbo adds. It does, it does, but man, turbos, I love turbos. Oh yeah, they're, they're nice when you have them. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they are. That's for sure. So yeah, just a lot of extra stuff, and um, you, we also have to annual this. So Blair and I are gonna be working on the engine. Meanwhile, Joe and Greg are already working on the airframe. We gotta get the stiffeners that are over here. We have to install those, we have to install a flap, and we have to do a complete annual because it is out of annual. So Greg was up till about midnight last night researching all of the ADs. How's that AD list looking? Horrible. Horrible. I didn't say how was the mirror this morning when you looked in it. <laughs> that, how's the AD oh, list? Oh man, that hurts. <laughs> <laughs> So we're going to get to work. Uh, we got a lot of work to do, but I, I feel yeah. good about it. Yep, let's get to it. Awesome, let's get at it. So this has to be our prop with a lot of parts. So there should be a new scimitar prop. Spinner. New spinner. New logbook. I love getting new packages. Oh, yeah. <laughs> The guys and I are over here setting everything up to get started for the day, and we're trying to find Greg, and we couldn't find Greg. Well, because he's down here working. <laughs> Greg is underneath the airplane, and he's already got a bunch of the stiffeners um, already uh, drilled out and coming off the airframe. So we better get up here and and get the rest of the parts together because he's going to beat us to everything. I'll have here it done. Don't. I'll have it done before be they even done. start. <laughs> What is the plan here? So obviously we got to get this this the tube out of the off. way. Yep. So we're going to take off all the shrouds, ADL clamps to get those, the scat tubes, the hoses, uh, anything we need to to get the vacuum pump, right. the magneto out, um, the fuel pump, uh, basically everything on the back, the accessory housing, yeah. get that out, and then just kind of see how much room we have. And to this work is with. this side is pretty much the only space, the place that we're going to be able to get that cover out of there i mean it's, it's going to be our best option yeah we yeah. take the oil cooler out of there as well cool. and uh 
Yeah, it's yeah. only going to come out one side, so let's... Yes, and uh, this is our best bet, so... Yeah, so let's focus on that and uh, see what we get. Cool. And then, so you already got the plugs out. Yep. You're already on top dead center. So yep. while we're doing a lot of this work, we're also going to be doing the different work that we have to do to have an annual as well. Yep, um, yep. So we're looking at everything. We're looking at all the electrical, all the hoses, um, any chafing, the baffling, the exhaust, yeah. just everything that... Uh, complete inspection, complete yep. and thorough inspection. Yep. The very first thing we always do before we start a project, especially a project that's pretty big like this, is we'll go ahead and we'll get our penetrant out and we will go ahead and just get everything all kind of lubed up and, and ready to be worked. I like to do that first so it just has time to soak in so when you get to that part, it's all ready to go. So Josh and I changed our directions a little bit because all of these header bolts and nuts, they're a little bit rusted, they're a little bit stuck, and we were looking at it, and we think we can go down to this area here and kind of pull everything out of this area instead to get that accessory case off. So we're gonna try that first. We do have this all soaking in croil, but we wanna to go to the path of least resistance and we want to take as little off as possible. So hopefully it, hopefully we can do it. I, I don't know, but Josh, what do you think? I think it's uh, it's a good avenue at this point. Yeah. We can see, I say we go for it. 50, 57% or? Um, I think we're maybe more up to like 62 now. All right, I like it. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just about ready to start unhooking some of the wires to the starter relay that are right next to the hoses that are the fuel line hoses that I pulled out and I totally forgot to unhook the battery. So uh, just kind of like a reminder guys, so like this is pretty much the first thing you should do before you start working on, well, anything. What, what do you think? Yeah, I agree. It's a good idea. Yeah. Especially next to fuel. Yeah. Definitely. Highly flammable. Definitely. Like ignite, explode kind of stuff. Yeah. So you got to take this stuff, we got to take the battery out. And also too, this thing's been sitting for a number of months. So we are going to pull this thing out and uh, we'll hook it up to a charger make sure it has a good draw we'll probably also do some testing on it and stuff So a little bit in, you know, we got a little bit of bad news here. If you look at that flat bracket, it's a little more ground down than we thought. We thought it was more the the flap that was, but here it's empty flap. The bracket was a little bit more. So we're gonna disassemble this, see what it takes to replace this, and we're gonna replace this. So we were uh, calling every single place we could call just a second ago, like all four of us were on the phone, but I think we did find one. Who had one? Airframe components. Airframe components, and, yep. and they're like, an hour and a half I think about here. an hour and a half drive yes. from here, yeah. So, um, I'm not sure who's gonna, who's gonna run for it, but we're gonna run, and we're gonna grab that flat bracket, and we're gonna have to install it. Um, Greg seems pretty confident being able to install it. Yeah, so we're just gonna get at it. Good for him. Awesome. So with that, Joe hitched a ride right over to Airframe Components. What's the chances that we'd find the exact part we needed and that part was right around the corner? Being down one mechanic meant Greg was gonna have to jump right in and get that flap off. Okay, I got it. pushing here. Kind of sort it. Yeah, I'll just tip it down so there's a couple pushing play in it. Okay. Nice, so we got the flap off here. You can get a little better look at this bracket. And this thing is toast. It's, it's, it's got a crack right here. I mean, right there is the bushing. And uh, 
the paint stress and cracked really bad here. So this thing's gone. We did find one. Joe and pilot guy. Pilot guy. So Joe and pilot guy yeah. <laughs> are uh, are headed out to get a new one and. The uh, Airframe Pro right here is going to get it in, so a lot more work than what we figured on doing, but but I think we're going to get be able to get it done, and uh, we'll probably take this flap we take it home. We'll probably get it actually. We'll probably repair it, but we figured it was easier instead of repairing it here. We would just go ahead and and put the other flap on, and this so this one will probably get repaired and get put back on. It's not too bad. It's not too bad of a of no, damage to bad. fix. Get this, just get the skin. Yeah, and oh, and it's only this little tiny skin. Mm -hmm. It's only this portion. So we'll definitely do that. Shoot up there, but yeah, we'll definitely do that, and then we'll save their flap. I mean, I really could get that piece too. Yeah. Do the skin on that piece. Yeah, that's what we'll do. Be like a new flap. Nice. With that crisis averted, Josh and I got back on the engine components. We had to get this thing done, and the clock definitely wasn't slowing down. bad it is what do you think is there any metal in there Don? Nah. no we're good yeah i guess i should have done this before uh rebuilding below. Might down below. the whole back of the engine i don't think i'm below else. that sucker perfect so we take a look in here and just make sure there's no obvious big chunks that we're gonna regret are in there there shouldn't be so, there's nothing down in the can of it. I don't see anything in here. All right. So if there's nothing in these, there's not gonna be anything in the rest of it. Look at she look. Man, that looks good. I don't even see a fleck of a fleck of a nothing. What do you think? Clean bill of health? Mm-hmm. I'd say you have clean bill of health. All right. That's what we'd like to hear. So, uh, how's everything looking? So, we're uh, we're getting more space. So, yeah, uh, this space gets. I've been working on this space here for uh, probably two hours now, and it keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So, I'm yeah. feeling better about you know getting this piece here off now we did talk to we did talk to another guy that does a lot of those uh you know uh, engine overhauls and stuff and he said they're really tough to get off uh so we're a little worried about that we did take some penetrant and we sprayed it up on this gasket here just hoping that it'll kind of soften it up a little bit yeah. and that we can uh, break it away without breaking it too much um and actually get that removed but i feel good about the amount of room we have back here We'll go ahead and get that scavenge pump off and we'll get the fuel yeah. pump off. I think I got most of the lines. I think all the lines are off over there. Got this oil line going on the cooler. And then I think we can start working on uh, these accessories. I'll yeah. start on the uh, case, the accessory case bolts. Start getting some of okay, those So out. the question is, what's your percentage now at this point? You know, it's not a whole lot's changed as far as percentage wise. I mean, I felt pretty good about it last time. So I think we're still in the 60 range. In the 60 range? Yeah, yeah. Greg, what do you think? What range are we at? 100%. 100%, baby. All right. I never, never wavered. <laughs> I say once we get, uh, get the, all the lines out of the way and start getting the, the actual case bolts out. Yeah. And um, see how much. Um, basically how much we can get it to move because you know it's tough down in here you got it the is. bolts Man, you got these it, it, it's hard for it's, it, it's it's hard for everybody at home to see what this looks like but that's the room we have right there yeah I mean, we're going to gain a little bit here but i mean the thing is what's tough is actually getting this to separate because you know something that's 
been oh, bolted yeah. together so long. Yeah, and, and heat mean, cycle and everything it else. It takes a lot just to break that seal and yeah. not damage anything. Yeah, 100%. So. You know, the other thing too is we did set ourselves, we were like, hey, you know, we want to get this done in three days. One thing we won't do is we won't rush it. Um, there's no rushing it. We're going to work hard and we're going to work late and we're going to put a lot of hours in during those three days, but, but everything is going to be perfect. Um, you know, I just, I want to stress that if this was like a car or something, we could break down the side of the road, no big deal. But I don't want to break down up in the air. That's, yeah. that's a big deal. So everything we do, it'll, it'll be 100% right, but we're moving through it. We planned everything out, I think really well. We got a lot of steps down and a lot more to go, so yep. we're rolling. Yep. How's it going down here, Greg? It's going. Man, you almost got that whole assembly pulled down. Yep. I could get this piece to come out. So you're working on pulling this whole this piece right here, this out. whole ring out. So we're gonna pull it kind of right out from underneath there, and then we're gonna be able to buck, drill and buck the rivets. Yep. For that mount. Yeah, so we can go and we'll put the rivets in this way and pull from this side. Awesome. Weird on the hell of a job, man. I mean, I, this is like a mess down here. You want me to clean it up down here a little bit for you? Nah, it's just laying it. <laughs> <laughs> heard Greg over here yelling and screaming so but I'm the man. It, <laughs> it looks like he got this piece out so this is that piece that he's been underneath there for the last probably two hours fighting with it is a ton of rivets but the cool thing is we can get right there to that mount we can get that drilled out it's gonna be so much better and we figured we'd have to repair this uh, on the flap side but not this uh, you know, on the wing side. So, uh, but we found one. We're gonna get it in now, thanks to Greg. Awesome. And uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna fly this thing out of here. I'm so I'm so afraid to say that. Don't say it. Don't we say might. It. We might. We might fly it out. <laughs> we're gonna try to fly it out of here. We might fly it out of here. Good job, man. He found him. He found the nest. Where's that? That way. See if I can say uh, hello to him and get out. <laughs> oh yeah. Are they? Yeah. Better get some spray. They're pissed. What kind of beads are they? I don't know. They're pissed though. Are these like honey beads or are they? Watch it. <laughs> he almost got beat in the face. Yeah, I did. I don't know if it's a good sign or a bad sign, but there's about 20 bees in this light on the right wing of the Saratoga. I think there might be a nest in here somewhere. <laughs> I'm gonna open this up. They're gonna fly out of here and not be happy. Oh, they oh, no, they'll fly out. Come on, get out of here. Get out of here. We thought they were yellow jackets that were in the wings, but it turns out they're honeybees. We're gonna take a look. I wanna see what's inside the wing um, and make sure there's not like a big honeybee nest in there because I'd hate to kill a whole bunch of honeybees. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pull the wing tip off and we'll see what's back there. So hopefully they didn't start like a big nest. Hopefully they'll kind of just vacate, uh, but I, you know, I don't really wanna kill a whole bunch of honeybees, so. So we went ahead and popped off this wing tip just in case there'd be a big honeybee nest in here or something and we don't see anything so we're not sure where all those honeybees came from they might have just literally got into this wing and started maybe scoping out a place for there to to build a nest but we don't see any we're gonna get the rest of the inspection panels off underneath here make sure there's nothing here because if you can see there's one right there flying around here now so uh, we'll check it out, make sure we're good, and then keep moving. All right, so Greg got, oh my God, that lap off. And when we were underneath there, it looked like there was a crack right there, but as you guys can see, if I can focus on it, that's not a crack, that's literally 
bearing ground down. Oh, I'm so it's good that we're replacing that. Oh my gosh. Did you see the one guy I came with as a hat on and some sunglasses? Did you see him come in here? Uh, I don't think so. All right. I know he flew out to grab a park, but we can't find him. What's the name? Joe? I've seen him. Okay. He came in here to get a drink. Did you remember the part? Yeah, we got a part and we got a short little tour. Brand new, still in the bag. Dude, that place is pretty cool. They have tons of warehouse space with mm -hmm. different parts. Oh yeah, the they have tons of stuff. Oh, there it is. Brand new. Get this part on after launch. And hopefully we can get a lot closer before the end of the day. There she is. Nice. Brand new in the bag. Brand new. Brand brand. Brand new. Still in the factory. Yeah, let's take this in and show Greg. Hey, Greg, we got present. No parts. Brand new. So we got a new part and it's the right one, which is good. So a little bit of riveting here. Okay, a lot of riveting and we'll have that part back in. We can get this flat bolted on and we'll be good to go. Thank you for rescuing that part, Joe. Yeah. I heard you had a little bit of a tour. I like the looks of that. Mm -hmm. So oh. yeah, conference table. So we got a really cool fab shop here. Very nice facility. Yeah. And a lot of parts. A lot so. of parts. Piper, Cessna, Beechcraft. So I think we'll probably be making a pretty good relationship out of that. Yeah, we might we might use a part or two out of there. All right, so we got every bolt out of the back of this cover. There are, some of the bolts are coming this way, some of them are coming that way. Some of them you can only turn a quarter of the way out until you pull the cover up a little bit. So there's two or three of them that are still engaged on the right side. So we're going to pull this cover back a bit, get those bolts out, and then we can finally shimmy it off and try to get it out this hole. We don't know if it's going to fit through here or what we're going to have to do, but we're going to give it a try. Okay. One more hole on the sump so we can get that back part of the case off and we can replace that bolt. And you know, the crazy thing is, all this work is to replace one bolt and we're gonna throw a gear on. So, all right, let's see if we can get this thing off. Straight Bam. back, straight Money. back, don't let it drop because we got a lot of stuff here. Okay, do we want to grab that gear there? So this one here. Which one? Oh, I mean, that's going to fall out the one on the bottom. Let's see if we can drop it down here and see what kind of room we need to get it at. Hold these up. Yeah, we're going to have to see how much we have to loosen up, potentially. Got it now. Got it. Yeah, it's, it's free enough and that's the way it definitely feels like it. There it is. Done deal. All right, we got it off. Done deal. So all that work was just to get this off so we could check a bolt. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so how does everything look down there's in there? A, you know, this is the bolt here that you're yeah. doing and this gear. Yeah, so but that's so the bolt's intact. Yeah, there's the dot that's in be two dots in between. Let me just pull this out so I can see. Yeah, there's the there's the one right there. A little bit of goop. Mm -hmm. goop. That is a that is scalloped already. 
Beauty. I see her gasket still intact in there. Yeah, that is. Sure is. Yeah. So we'll put the new gear, we'll put the, put the new bolt in. Yeah, so last night uh, we stayed a little bit late. I didn't report it, but we did clean the back of the engine cases. Uh, so it's pretty much ready for the install. I think we have to clean this back case half, and then we got to go ahead and pull the bolt out, pull the gear off, and install it. Now, according to the AD, the only thing we have to do is replace the bolt, not the gear. Correct. Um, I did bring a gear with me. I don't know how tough it is to replace because on a, my Mooney on the M20C that's out in Lawton, Oklahoma, when we pulled the engine apart, there was a hairline crack in the gear as well. So we'll take a look at that today, but that's where we're going to start. Okay. All right, let's do it. So we got the gear off. We found an area here that it's a little indentated. There it's got a little bit of wear and right there and right here. So it's definitely a good thing that we that we pulled this and that we have one. We're gonna keep this, but that's that's where that one of the gears rode on that. And yeah, it was definitely wearing on it. And if you look inside of it, it actually has some little pits in there. So it looked like it got maybe a little hot at one time or something. I'm not sure, but we're putting a new one in. We inspected all the gears that were inside the rear case and everything looks really good. I'm pretty confident that uh, we're gonna be good to go. The case looks really good. There's no cracks in it. There's no, we didn't see any metal chips. We, we didn't see anything to be alarmed about. here um, on these light combings we have there's marks on the gears but the marks aren't always right in the outside of it we get a zero on here there's zeros on this idler gear it shows that this it goes in between this tooth here and then there's another one up here that goes up on the cam gear there's a zero here so this shows that this all aligns and we do that with the engine on number one obviously timing is really important so we verified this and it's good to go. So now we can go ahead, we can bend the tab over. This is all torqued down and we keep moving forward. All right, so we have, we have everything all set in here. We have the gears in, everything's timed right. Everything is all lubed up. The gasket is set and we have a little sealant on the base gasket. Everything looks good. So now we just gotta, you know, gotta hope that we can get the piece back through here Everything is all cleaned up, all unscathed, and get everything back into place without all the gears moving. So Josh, what do you think our percentage of, <laughs> of chances that we get it in without any of these gears falling out and without any of the other gears shifting? I'd say 100%. 100%? Oh, yes. Well, man, I like this. Yeah. <laughs> I like this. I'm confident. You've been, you've been hanging out with us long enough. He goes yeah, from 50s to 60s. Now he's <laughs> 200%. Now, yeah. seriously, these uh, with a little coat of oil, they actually really stick in place good. The only thing is going to be able to is be getting to get these lined up, yep. you know, as they go in, because obviously it's four gears and we're trying to slide the case on and these have to get lined up as well. And there's really no way to time them because there, there is no timing of them, but there's no way to position them to really know exactly where the teeth need to be. Yeah. Yep. So that'll be the, that'll be the fun part. And yep. then also we have one or two screws that are still in the cases that 
we have to turn in as we go, but 100%, I like it. So you keep the gears. Yeah, the caught the wire in the bag, yeah. More wire here. I think from there we start trying to put it in, right? Mm -hmm. What's the first gear to engage? Right where your hand is, I think. So goes. right there, that goes. Okay, top gear isn't there yet. Right. I moved it about half a tooth. Okay. There we go, we're engaged now. We're back in Got it. Okay. Yep. Oh, look at that. It go. just slid right on. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, we're just got the dowel rods, I think, right now. Is... Yeah. Well, it looks like you got a couple more things installed there. Uh, yeah, yeah, we got a couple things on. We have both the scavenge and the fuel pump. Everything's tightened down, everything's torqued. So right now we're just running a lot of the lines and then we got to go ahead and get the vacuum pump on and then go over everything again <laughs> just to make sure. <laughs> so we're gonna clear again with Greg today. He's finishing up drilling up the last parts of the rig to get that removed. Once that's removed, then it's reinstall time. So we'll get that hammered out and put together and see how things go. Okay, so this last piece up front, it had through bolts, nuts on the inside. So we had to yank the battery box and a bunch of other stuff here to gain access to it. And I don't know if you can see the light coming through them holes. Those are two of the six. So they're really tough to get to, but uh, we teamed up on it, kicked its butt and got them out so i think that might be pretty close to the last thing we needed to remove that rib i think there's a couple rivets yet but the last piece of rib will be out of there in no time and greg already has all the back half of the new ribs put in place so it's just going to be a matter of once that last piece is out just a whole lot of smashing some rivets Greg's gonna put the last piece in place, click them in, and it's gonna be a matter of just riveting. We got the front piece fastened. We pulled the middle piece back off, did a little cleaning, final inspecting, and now he's reinstalling it. We'll pop rivets through there. A lot of stuff inside that kind of gets in your way. As you can tell, there's rivets that run the whole way through all that. So then once we get here to the back, it's gonna be much easier. Everything's open. A couple rivets under there, which we'll probably have to pull rivet. And then a couple more to fuck and we'll be done. Yep. 
Yep. Yep. How's it going down there, Greg? It's going. All I hear is rivets dropping on the ground, the drill going, and aluminum dust all over the place for like the last two hours. Well, the airplane hasn't fallen apart yet, so. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like you guys got that whole left side rib all attached, right? Yeah. If you guys see, we got some damage on these, uh, on these gear doors. These are the secondary portion of the gear doors. So we're gonna pull them off and take a look at them. But it's actually, it's looking really good under here. So the guys couldn't wait. Uh, we were just getting ready to leave the hangar and they had to check out the new scimitar prop for the Saratoga. Yeah, see, that's the full scimitar. Man, that looks sweet. There. Man, that is gonna look so good. Now, will that have a different sound to it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like it'll go. Scimitar, 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 scimitar. <laughs> <laughs> and now that we're opening up a little bit, you gotta open up the big daddy. But this is the best part right here. Hey, mm. This is what makes it look cool. A big box with a lot of stuffing in it. Polish spinner. Look at that thing shine. Man. It says Dunn's hat. Nano, nano. <laughs> <laughs> that is gorgeous. Yeah, Don't get your fingerprints on it. No, that's on <laughs> You see hey, where I'm grabbing hey, it, right? Go some, wash your hands. Some, Look at that. Some <laughs> yeah, so a brand new scimitar prop. Um, so these they're supposed to like, you know, perform really well. We are going to put a full electronic ignition because they have that company out now that has the fully electronic ignition STC for these where you add an extra battery. battery yeah. So although we're putting a $2,500 overhauled mag on, we're, I, I want to put one of them on because it has, uh, it has advance, which equals horsepower. Um, and I do want to port and polish the cylinders on it because heck, who doesn't want an extra 40 horsepower? Everything needs you more power. You might have to, I would ask them if they can give you the curve of it, because it's turbo, it might not advance it that much. Oh, it'll advance when I'm done. Yeah, you know it. what I mean? It's, it's... Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we got all the back of the engine accessories, everything here, all buttoned up. And it's really late, so we're gonna get back in here for day three tomorrow. We're gonna get the bottom of the airplane buttoned up. We're gonna get the rest of the engine buttoned up, get the prop on. See if this thing will start. We've really dug in. We've been doing a lot of work. It may have been a pretty late night last night, but we got the engine pretty much buttoned up. And I think, what do we have underneath the... Just a couple more rivets. A couple more rivets. So we probably have like 200 rivets yet on, on the bottom of it to go. What do we have to do on the engine yet? Well, we got a few injectors, I believe, to go back here on the left side. And we got some, uh, just some final inspection there behind the engine. And then we got an oil, oil filter. And we're going to be getting really close to uh, basically putting the prop on, getting yeah. the timing dialed in. Nice. Nice. We get that set. And we get to unbox our brand new prop, which I've had to fend off Greg from that because he really wanted to see what that new. Come on, just let me open it. <laughs> crazy expensive <laughs> prop looks like. And actually, I had to Joe's behind the camera. I had to fend him off too. They were trying to gang up on me the other night to get that unboxed, so. <laughs> so yeah, but uh, yeah, we're excited to get at it. So let's get at it. Let's do it. All right, so I'm over here on the left side of the engine. We're gonna go ahead and get these clean injectors installed in the fuel rail.
All right, we got the fuel rail tightened up. All the injectors are in. All the injectors are in over on the other side. Josh is over here fighting with the oil filter. Uh, I think we probably should have put the oil filter before putting all of the rest of this stuff on here. But Josh says he loves a challenge, so we figured we'd save it for last. Yeah, that's pretty consistent. <laughs> so, but it is just like changing the oil filter. I mean, this is what you fight with. I mean, if you look down in here, that little, little thing right there, yeah, that's a lot of like, a lot of airplane stuff in there. So, especially this thing because it's a turbo and it's got all kinds of things going on in here and it's actually an upside down engine. Well, I mean, the exhaust is up here. So you got the exhaust up here. You got the intake down there. Usually it's the other way around. So the cooling comes in the front and it comes up underneath and out the top and then goes somewhere else. So. Yeah, so this is a little bit, all right, this is a lot different actually. And you got this big, huge turbo, turb ski stuffed in the side of here. So everything is just super tight. And the other thing I'm looking at is, is all of this stuff here. These are like hot, hot tubes here. Hot, like these are like really hot, running everywhere. So I don't know how this thing just doesn't light on fire, but it works. It works. It definitely works. I mean, this thing will uh, full power, I think, to like 12,000 feet wow. or something like that. So, okay. yeah, and I don't, I don't have a reason to go over 12,000 feet. Not yet, anyway. At this point, everything's looking really good. Add some oil, throw the prop on, set the timing, and hopefully she fires right up. All right, so we got the oil filled. We got uh, 10 quarts in. This does hold 12, but we got 10 quarts in there. We do have two more for it, but we're gonna go ahead. I guess we're gonna pull the plugs out and turn it over since it's been so long since it's had any kind of oil pressure. Just let it build pressure and then we'll check the oil and just kind of go over everything and make sure there's no leaks or anything like that. That's good. All right. Oh, uh, so there's times I wish the camera was rolling. For that whole thing. <laughs> so Greg I'll was just you. getting down on the creeper and the creeper crept on him and he kind of landed yeah, on his butt. So he's about ready to have a huge argument with this piece that has to slide in here. That's gonna be a very and huge argument. You guys look at this. Like, yeah, not easy. But Greg has been so impressive on this job. Good metal workers are really hard to find, so excited to have you with. Well, that's why we ended up with average, so they're hard to find. With average. <laughs> Come down here and do it yourself. <laughs> you're, you're mean, Joe. <laughs> so, Greg got that most difficult part back in. Now it's just a matter of about what do you say, 150 rivets? Yeah, probably about that. <laughs> well, I think what so. we'll do is we'll pull this down, get as many as we can through here, maybe reach up behind there and get as many as we can back in the back there, and then the rest will cherry them. Sounds good, looks good. So we're gonna keep rolling. All the injectors in the left side. Josh has the oil filter in. We got oil in. Everything's good to go. The deck pressure line, that's all hooked up right. Injectors are in. All the injector lines on this side. The other side's buttoned up. So Greg is actually getting, what do you call this thing? The backing plate? Backing I call it a plate. flywheel. I can't, I can't help but be automotive. I, I just can't help. So. Ring gear. Ring gear. There we go. So we're gonna get the ring gear on here. Um, we found a couple of little issues that were previous, so we're getting them cleaned up and we're getting really close to buttoning this thing up. Something doesn't feel right. Turn, turn it a little bit if you can. Which way? Either way. Keep going. Keep going. That should be top dead center there. All right, so we're off. I'm just taking it off. Yeah, I was going to take it off anyway. 
I'm just gonna buy a new one anyway, because this this here tabs this is bent. It's seen better days, that's for sure. Yeah. It's not uniform. It's hanging up over here. All right, let's pull all the belts off and let's put it without the belts on. Got that one? All right. Backing plate is perfectly smooth. Could this be bent? Uh, make sure you got it lined up right. All right. Go ahead and hold it against her. I just want to double check it. Here, watch out. Nice. It was the belts pulling That's on it. All right, so we're a little bit worried about whether something was bent when we had the belts on here. It was pulling on either side. Notice something I just noticed too. All those are off. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, so we were worried about this thing was bent or tweaked because it wasn't sitting right, but the belts were pulling on it, but we just wanted to get everything off, wanted to double check it. I think this trip and this rescue has been more double and triple checking than I've done with anything, which is really good because um, then we know it's going to be good. Next cut, mayday, mayday. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so we got to Saratoga all ready to finally unbox this prop and get the prop on it. So we've had this here for months and months and months. It's crazy to like pay for something and have it waiting and not be able to enjoy it, so. Yeah. Want to grab want to grab a blade? That one or this one here? Yeah, that one. Ready? Just watch that one all hit the ground. Okay. All right. Guess we need to take this off. Is yeah. this greased? Yeah. I got it. Oh, I'm bear hugging. You got it? Yeah. Backing plates? Um, do we want to put a backing plate on here or are we figuring we're going to go without one? We'll go without one. <laughs> All right, let's let's pop this thing off again. He's in there a lot further than. Yeah. Okay. All right. Back we want to put board. it back over in that box again. All right. Let's put the backing plate on first. So, whenever you're getting excited to put a prop on, make sure you don't forget the backing plate. This backing plate. Good? Yeah. Pick your end up a little bit, though. Up, 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 up. Oh, okay. I see it. You got it? Yep. Go ahead up. Here, let me hug this thing like I was. You got it? Down. It's torquing it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Now that hitting the ground with one blade going forward and the other ones and it didn't bend that crank, like how does that not? I don't know. And that's how that's that's why we that? checked it three times. You know, we checked this crank, you know, the, the front end of this whole engine, the crank and alignment and stuff. Well, when you three fire it up, times. somebody look down the prop and see if it's running straight. Yeah, right. We'll put a see laser it, on it. See if it's one blade or two. <laughs> yeah, like literally. All right, so final installation of the prop. You're gonna get it all torqued down, ready to go. Ooh, I love that sound. So we got this all timed up. The one thing that we did find is the, so this is a, a single mag with both sides in it. So it's single driven with two different mags in it. So what we found is the two, what do you think separates it? A couple degrees? Two degrees, yeah. So two degrees difference in the timing, which personally, there's something inside me that dies a little. Knowing that it's like off, I don't know why. I think that's a perfect excuse 
to put a completely electronic ignition on here. Oh, yeah. I agree. Variable timing. Get all the Variable benefits. timing. So we're just going to go ahead and we're going to turn this thing over. We have the plugs out. We have the ignition off. We're just going to go ahead and spin this over because we have fresh oil, fresh filter. We've had everything a part of the engine. We just want to get some oil pressure in here before we pull it out and try to start it. Clear. Clear prop. Check that starter, make sure his starter's not getting hot. I'm walking up to the airplane. Switch is off. Switch is off. Starter is cold, it's not even warm. And the blade is in perfect symmetry as it goes. It's not wobbling, <laughs> so. Clear prop. Came up to the green. Up to the green. Yes. Awesome. Hey, at least we got at least we got one thing right so far. <laughs> yeah, nothing was grinding. So. Yeah, no grinding. No grinding. The prop is in like a perfect straight line as it's spinning. I was I don't know why I'm just so worried about that. Um, no valves were hitting in the inside. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so no, we we checked everything a bunch of times. I'll say that now because it all worked out so far. <laughs> I'm going to change my tune if it doesn't later. Okay. <laughs> so I guess the next thing is pulling this thing outside, see if it's going to start. Yeah. Yeah, we'll get the plugs back in, get the leads on, and uh, make uh, sure. Yeah, we got to get the plugs in. Yeah, we got to do that. That's the important, important part. <laughs> hey, Greg, what are you doing? Nothing. <laughs> you look like you were having a conversation with the engine I telling did. it it's going to run. Conversation. It's going to run. <laughs> it's going to run well. I didn't see that in, in the manual for this airplane. No, it's not in the manual. Talking that's to it. That, that's stuff that's he, he was just He was just talking to the Saratoga telling it was going to run. I walked up that's, and... That's implied maintenance practices. Okay, that's, that's right, implied. That's, right. that's not FFA, <laughs> FAA standards. I, I did that guy came in with a mag problem on a Baron fix it up for him. Anyway, his wife came in there, just getting ready to go on the trip, and I'm sitting here going, mm, um, <laughs> well, I looked over, I said, it'll be fine. And the look on her face, she was scared <laughs> to death to get in that airplane. <laughs> okay, here we go. Okay. Okay, we're good. Yep. We can keep turning, we're good this way. Once we get it running, we'll taxi away from the hangar, so just point it away so we're not blowing into the hangar. Think, right? It's an airplane. It's an airplane. <laughs> All right, so let's get in here and see if this thing will fire up. So, uh, who's got the fire extinguisher? Do we need one? We Always need have a fire extinguisher. So there's there's a fire extinguisher right in there on the other side of the wall. Fire extinguisher, you guys have no faith. <laughs> uh, we saw who left them <laughs> Yeah, we let Joe turn a bolt. <laughs> Does it matter if the flaps are up or down? No, put them up. Do we have brakes? Not on my side. We have brakes here? Yeah, I'm on my no side. No brakes over there? No. Nope. I think I have brakes. Joe, push on the wing. Yeah. All right, I got brakes. I almost forgot how nice this panel is. What do you think, Greg? You like that panel? It's all right. All right. For some reason, Greg really likes these two. He said not to get rid of them. They worked good. How do you know? I would I would get rid of this before I get rid of those. Yeah, the, that's gonna go once we get back. That this is to, you can't even get those worked on. Those S all thirty, so mm. you can't get that worked on. All right, so we just got everything done. This Saratoga. We have the back of the case on, the props on. Everything is ready to go. Let's see if it'll fire up. Do what it. Think, Greg. Do there it. you go. Yeah, all right. Go for it. Oh, yeah. Low pressure. Yeah, so we got fuel pressure. The oil pressure came right up. It's running. It's running like really smooth. Sure. 
it, it is perfect. Oil pressure came up right away. Everything looks really good. It's sitting here at a thousand, well, a thousand one hundred sixty RPM. Idling perfect. It's got a good draw. It's got good volts. Yeah, you alternators know, on. Everything's good, no leaking or anything? No, yeah, looks good. I'll probably fire it up, yeah. And taxi it a little bit, go run up. How's it feel? I'm not gonna lie, it felt really good. <laughs> yeah, it looked like it, <laughs> looked like it uh, felt good. It's actually, it was really smooth. Yeah, very smooth. So the first thing I noticed is how much smoother this is than most airplanes I've been in. Yeah. Like there's no vibration in here. Yeah, everything looks really smooth and true and uh, yeah, just a little bit of initial smoke and yeah. That is awesome. She's back to life. What do you think? Do you think hey. we could think we could do that in there? Yeah. She's back to life. <laughs> Never doubted us, right? Man, that thing runs smoother than anything else I have. <laughs> Sounds <laughs> really good. That's well, nice. actually, I think I sold most of the stuff that I have that runs anymore. So. <laughs> <laughs> you guys managed to pull that case off. With it, on, with it in there. Out. Yeah. That's, that's impressive. Yeah. Clear prop. So we're gonna go down the taxiway, we're gonna cycle the prop, and we're gonna do a run up, make sure it's firing right on both sides of the mag, and yeah. I'm going to check the mag, I'm going to do the normal prop cycle, make sure everything works. Mag check's good. Oh, it works perfect. So temperatures are all good, oil pressure, everything is all good. Feel good. What do you think? Good. Think it's good? Good. Nice. All the avionics are on. I want to go fly this thing. Does the air conditioning work? Uh, yeah. What's the cooler there? I don't think it's coming on. There you go. Yeah, let her, let her go for a while. Yeah, it's working. AC work. What do you guys think? Wow, that's a pretty big smile you got there. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing we found broken is two digits on the one readout. Totally disappointed. Not sure what I'm gonna have to do about that. Oh really? <laughs> Darn it. Everything's perfect. No, everything's Darn perfect. It. Air conditioning even works. Everything's smooth, run up. There's barely any drop. Obviously we got a new mag on it. Mm -hmm. But uh, how'd it sound? It sounded great. It sounded Drop good? looked great. Everything looked nice and true. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, once the prop, once we got a little bit of pressure in there, get the oil cycle, start cycling and stuff, it it was like immediate. So um, I can tell you though, as you're kind of gassing it up a little bit, when I was I was getting ready to set the RPM, once that turbo kicks in, all of a sudden the RPM starts climbing. Oh, okay. You know, okay. so which is uh, which is definitely different. So now we got to get in here, get this thing annualed, and let's see if we gonna make it home. Awesome. Should be. Yeah. It's been three days here to Bluffton Airport. We got the Saratoga almost ready to fly. We got it to start. It's running really well. So next time we get down here, we're going to bring you guys along and we're going to be flying the Saratoga 500 miles all the way back home to the Rebuild Rescue Hangar. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for being part of the adventure that is Rebuild Rescue. Take care.